Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So I've had a, a nice holiday away now, nice and refreshed and I'm ready to start uh, getting back into the astro imaging. So what I've decided, I've had a good think about things and I've decided I'm going to build myself a second rig. A smaller one, more portable one that I can just lift in and out. Maybe when I'm not in the mood for opening the observatory and something that maybe I can use even the ASI Air with or just, you know, a simple tablet type software. Um, so what I've done is I bought myself a new scope to start with, which you can see here. It's the Ascar 71F. So I'm just going to do a bit of an unboxing and a review on this scope. I have um, I have wanted another scope for quite some time, a smaller scope. So uh, I think this fits the bill. It's uh, so reasonably priced and, and the perfect size, perfect weight. So let's get into a bit of an unboxing and then uh, we'll have a closer look at the scope. Okay, so this is what's come. This has come direct from China. This is exactly how it's come. I've not unpacked it yet at all. You're going to see it for the first time along with me. This was delivered this morning by FedEx. I don't think this particular scope comes with an aluminium case or anything like that. It just comes as it is in cardboard boxes. <laughs> Double boxed by the look of it. I think we're going to have to tip this upside down. Turn it back over and undo the second box. Careful not to put the blade in too far. Okay like a QC check sheet, some hard foam and there's the actual scope. This particular one comes with the back spacers that you need um, to get your correct spacing and also they supply a couple of eyepieces and a diagonal in the box. I don't think these are any anything to right home about as regards quality but for somebody buying the scope just wanting to get straight out there and do a bit of visual then uh, they are available in the box for you and then the actual scope itself just pack that back up which it's wrapped in plastic within the rings so Is back up. I like the colour, I must admit, it's uh, I do like that colour blue, as you can tell by the t shirt that I'm wearing. And there it is, unboxed. It has a really nice finish, it's more like a stippled finish and what we'll do now is we'll have a much closer look at this so here it is the Ascar 71F now it's a pretty lightweight scope it's 2.5 kilograms without the dovetail top and bottom and the rings it's roughly three kilograms as it sits here now um, it's a 71 mil diameter lens, it's a 490 millimeter focal length and it's f6.9. Now f6.9 is pretty slow but there is a reducer out for this scope now and it is available and that brings it down to f5.2 and 367 millimeters focal length which is on par with my Esprit really which is an f5.5 so f5.2 I think we're really good. I have got the reducer for this on its on the way, um, but obviously I haven't tried that yet. I have uh, image with this, but we'll show you the images a bit later on. Um, it's a quadruplet, 71F, F stands for flat field. It's a quadruplet scope um, with two lots, two groups of two elements, 
the flattener obviously at the back. Uh, it quotes a 44 millimeter imaging circle and also 44 millimeter with the reducer as well. So it's supposed to be up to full frame. It's fine with APS-C, so I haven't got a full frame camera, so I can't uh, try that. Uh, and it retails at 599 UK pounds, which I mean, it's an absolute bargain to be honest for a quadruplet scope um, and $599 if you're in the US. I think it's an absolute bargain, especially for beginners wanting a scope with no worry of trying to get correct back focus, anything like that. As long as you're in focus, then you're at the perfect position and you should get perfect stars. Now with the reducer fitted, you do then have a 55 millimeter back focus. So you do have to take that into account. 55 millimeter is the standard these days. Um, it's not a major issue and the, and the reducer itself actually fits inside. So uh, that's also good. So I think it actually reduces uh, the back focus slightly. So your camera actually comes in a little bit where you, when you've got the reducer on the back compared to not having it on the back. Um, now it does come, we'll just put this down for a second. It does come with some accessories. Now you've got the extension for imaging. This is in two halves and then it ends in an M48 thread. So this screws straight in the back of the focuser and then you've got an M48 thread on the back. Now when you're using it with the reducer, you remove the larger of these two pieces and you screw in the reducer to there and then the whole thing screws in the back. So like I say, you're reducing the back focus by this this amount but without the reducer you have both of these on the back and then your camera on the back and then at focus it's about the focus is out about 30 millimeters before you reach focus um, so that comes with it you also get which is quite unusual nowadays is you get two eyepieces and a diagonal so for anybody wanting um, a scope for visual straight out of the box you've got everything you need to get going so there's a 20 millimeter eyepiece and an 8 millimeter eyepiece and a 45 millimeter a 45 degree erecting prism now these aren't going to be the best quality in the world but they're certainly going to be good enough to get you started and get you going with some visual work and it's it's a nice touch that they actually put these in the box because I don't know of any other scopes these days that actually come with these accessories so uh, well done on that the dew cap aluminium metal dew cap again a nice touch as I mentioned in the unboxing the finish on the scope is nice it's sort of a mottled rather than being smooth paintwork um, which I really like you've got two uh, finder scope or one finder scope a guide scope or your ASI air that you can fit on those you've also got a handle there which is also a dovetail rail again for fitting a guide scope and obviously it comes as you see it here now on the back you've also got a rotator which again I think most scopes these days come with those built in and you've also got a two inch visual back for your eyepiece or a diagonal whatever else and a 1.25 adapter on the back of there the usual with Ascar rack and pinion focuser with your scale on there plus your degrees for your rotator around there and it's a solid focuser quite impressed with that it feels uh, solid but smooth um, I really like their focusers to be honest they seem very big for the scope it's a big solid focuser for the size of the scope but uh, I'm actually going to get a, a motor for this um, to use it in the future. I've, I've just used it at the moment with a Bahetnov mask to get focus and it worked very well. So um, that's it, the 71F flat field quadruplet scope. So like I say, I have image with this. I've done uh, just a few quick images in mono and one in colour. Now these were really, just for the sake of this video, just to give you an idea of the star shapes. Uh, and the chromatic aberration. Now, on, on a scope of this cost, £599, $599, it's got an ED lens, but it's an unspecified glass. 
so we don't know exactly what ED lens it is. Uh, it says minimal chromatic aberration in the specs, so you are going to get a little bit, but is that really an issue with the modern tools today? I mean, straight away, if you're imaging with mono, chromatic aberration is, is moot because it doesn't matter in mono because you're focusing all three colours separately anyway. So it doesn't even come into it for mono images. But even in one shot colour with today's tool, software tools such as Blur Exterminator, which when you use that can really minimise any CA, and this has minimal CA anyway, as you'll see in the image, but it's, it's just not really, not really a problem, I don't think. Um, mono, like I say, for, it's not a problem at all. And colour, I think it's minimal. So uh, let's have a look at these images. So as you can see in the corners of this image, this is a mono image, this is just an hour's worth of data. There's been no processing done to this. And as you can see in the corners, the stars are pretty excellent. Uh, this, this is pretty much on par with my Esprit as regards corner star shapes. I can't, can't moan at all about this. Obviously, if you then run it through Blur Exterminator, you know, it's going to be even better. If there is any improvement to be had, you will see it with that. But uh, I think it's great, straight out of the box. I know some people do spend a lot of time getting their cameras completely dialed, dialed in as regards tilt and things like that. But for those of you who don't, who just want to get out there and get imaging, this is great straight out of the box. And here's a close-up of a star in a one-shot colour image. And as you can see here, there is a bit of CA. You can see the blue and the reds. But again, run it through Blur Exterminator, it, it's almost invisible. Um, and again, with mono imaging, it's not a problem anyway. So, I, I, like I say, I'm building a small rig and this is going to be the base of that rig. So in the future, I'll probably get a lot more imaging done with this and be able to show you a lot more detailed images, much more longer exposures and uh, bigger, bigger stacks of images. But this was just to give you an idea of what it's like straight from the box, straight onto the mount and imaging. You know, no, no tweaking, anything like that. My camera has been adjusted for tilt, but the, it was minimal, so you know, that isn't really a problem. If you have got tilt, again, Blur Exterminator would sort it for you, so it's nothing really to worry about. I do like to get my equipment dialed in uh, as best I can, so I know I'm getting the best out of it before I start using tools such as Blur Exterminator. But, like I say, out of the box, this was absolutely fine. So, more to come from this scope. I'm like I say, I'm building a new rig. I've got to get the mount. I've got guide scope, guide cameras, imaging cameras. Uh, I've also got a new mini PC, and I've also got a new power box on the way. So all I'm actually waiting for now is to get a, a get a good mount. I'd like to get a harmonic drive, a little bit pricey really at the moment, but this is going to be the base of that imaging rig. So there's going to be a lot more to come from this scope. So. Uh, I hope you found that useful. If so, give it a like, give me a thumbs up, and please leave a comment. I do like to hear from you all. So uh, until the next one, thanks for watching, and clear skies.